Hello and good morning. Welcome to Breakfast at Nine, a place to be family, to make friends and to explore faith. Our hashtags for the day are these. Hashtag deny everything, Baldrick. Hashtag I do not know the man. And hashtag he broke down. And our theme for this morning is three strikes and you're out. And to get a programme underway, here come sheep. Hello everyone. It's lovely to be with you all again. And here I am in Alan and Rachel's... Um, what do you call this place again? The kitchen. Oh, yes. Kitchen. What's the kitchen, Alan? Oh, that's a place where we prepare food. But the food's outside, Alan. It's on the ground. It's called grass. Anyway, here I am, and I'm looking forward to another amazing breakfast at nine. It's going to be really, really great. <laughs> okay. Now, I was asked what my favourite verse in the Bible is. There's so many wonderful ones to choose from, but I think my favourite is from John 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. That's Jesus speaking, and he's so good and so loving that he wanted to pay the price for my sin and yours too. Isn't that amazing? And we will hear more about this over the next few weeks. Anyway, before we have our reading today, I just wanted to tell you about what happened yesterday in my field. My best friend, Texel, she poops on my favourite dandelion patch. Would you believe it? I did ask her about it later, and do you know, she denied it. She said it wasn't her. I said, it was you, Texel. And she said, it wasn't. But I told her I knew it was her. And she said, how? Oh. I told her it was because I was standing right behind her when she did it. And some went on my hoof. We're still best friends though. I told you that story because it reminded me of our reading this morning. Where Peter denied knowing Jesus just as Jesus had told him he would. If you want to follow it, then it's in the Bible. Hmm. Have a look in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verses 66 to 72. It's a really moving story. And after our reading, Dave is going to talk about it which I am really looking forward to. I love hearing about God. Don't you? Well, bye then. See you next week. Our reading this morning is brought to you by Luke. He's going to read to us from Mark chapter 14, verses 66 to 72. And the story is headed, Peter denies Jesus. Thank you, Luke. Hello, everybody in Breakfast Church. I'm going to be reading Mark chapter 14, verse 66 to 72. Peter disowns Jesus. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene. Jesus, she said, but he denied it. 
I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went into the entrance. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself and swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the cock crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Thank you. Thank you, Luke, for reading that text for us. So let's just come to see what is going on in this account uh, that Mark has written of what was happening in the courtyard with Jesus, with Peter, and with the crowds that were gathered. Now let me just take you back a couple of weeks. Can you remember what's happened over these last uh, two story occasions that we've looked at? Do you remember from the previous story, uh, in this very same chapter, in verse 29, how Peter had said to Jesus, I will never leave you, even if everyone else does, I won't. And then do you remember last week, in the account of Jesus in the garden, how he had run away and then how he'd found some courage in the shadows and he had followed at a distance Jesus and the crowds as they'd gone to the high priest's house. And now we find him here in verse 66 in the courtyard with those gathered there outside of the house, outside of the court proceedings uh, as they're loosely described. And it's here that he encounters the high priest's servant woman. Uh, and it says that she came by. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked straight at him and said, You too are with Jesus the Nazarene. Now, there's a significance in this text here. Uh, the emphasis on the fact that she is a servant and a woman is a measure culturally of her standing. It is very low. The place of a woman in that culture wasn't uh, as strong uh, as that of a man and that of a servant uh, made her standing and her significance even less. And so here she is now, a servant woman, facing up to Peter. And she, is, uh, she says to him, surely you were with him. She says, you too were with Jesus of Nazareth. But Peter, he responds by denying it. I don't know. I don't know or understand what you were talking about. Strike one. Peter, before a servant woman, she of the lowest standing in their culture and community hasn't had the courage to front up who he is, hasn't had the courage to acknowledge to meeting and knowing Jesus, hasn't had the courage to say, yes, I am with him. There in the shadows, there in the cold, there by the fire, faced with a servant woman who has recognised him, he denies knowing Jesus. And you might wonder how it is that uh, she comes to recognise him. Well, perhaps there's something in the fact that she's a servant woman. You recall that the crowds that came out to Jesus in the garden when they came out with the high priest, with those armed with clubs and swords, amongst them were servants. Because one of them, Malchus, the high priest's own servant, Peter had lashed that out with his sword and cut his ear off. Now it very well may be that this servant woman was with Malchus or known to Malchus. Uh, and so her recognition is not, oh, I think you might be, but it was quite emphatic. Now, uh, perhaps Peter was afraid of being acknowledged as the one that sw uh, swung his sword and, uh, and injured the guy, uh, even though Jesus had healed him and restored his ear in his hearing. Yet he is afraid. He who had said, I won't deny you, even if everybody else does, has denied Jesus this one time. The text goes on, uh, Jesus having moved away from the fire and moved into a passageway, uh, perhaps just further from the light, 
further from the clouds, deeper into the shadows. And as he's done that, the cock crows for the first time. Then the text goes on in verse 69. The servant woman saw him there and began to repeat to bystanders, he is one of them. But Peter denied it again. Strike two. Here, this woman, uh, quite emphatic, quite uh, assured, this man, he is one of them. And Jesus, to those around, to those in the shadows with him, to those in the passageway, to those standing further from the high priest's uh, home and from the proceedings going on inside. Peter denies it again there in verse 70. But then it says a little while later, the bystanders accused Peter again. You can't deny that you're one of them because you too are from Galilee. Now, what is it that's going on here? How is it that they know? Well, uh, very likely Peter had uh, uh, an accent, uh, much as we would recognise the accent of many from a country, from Wales or from Scotland, from Somerset or from Liverpool. Then it's quite clear that uh, the accent of a Galilean would have been quite distinct in Jerusalem, in a metropolitan city. Maybe something about the way that he dressed as well set him apart a country bumpkin amongst the, uh, the, the city gents and others. Uh, but whatever it is uh, that they've uh, identified him, Peter is having none of it. Look at what he says there in verse 71. Then Peter said that I swear that I am telling the truth. May God punish me if I am not. I do not know the man you were talking about. Strike three. Three times now, Peter, in a short space of time, before a servant woman, before that woman and bystanders, before the crowd that were there, has denied knowing Jesus. And now his denial, when it says that, I swear that I am telling the truth, may God punish me if I am not. Peter is invoking the strongest possible denial. That in any other circumstance, such a denial would have been accepted as, well, well, he surely couldn't have been. We must be mistaken. Yet they are so clear, so convinced, uh, that Peter draws down the, even the, the, the potential for the wrath of God, that God's own anger on him, uh, that he would deny him and says, you know, God punish me if I'm lying to you. But he knows he's lying and they know that he is lying. Three occasions now, Peter has denied his Lord. He said, I would never deny you, even if everybody else does. Then he'd run away. Then he'd found some courage and come back. And now, before these, he has denied his master three times. And then verse 72 tells us, just then, a cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said before the cock crows twice, you will say three times that you do not know me. Now that passage ends and he broke down and cried and rightly he might. But if we read the other Gospels who all of them make an account of this story of Peter and his denial of Jesus, Luke in chapter 22 of his gospel, and in verse 61, tells us that the point that the cock crowed a second time, Jesus looked across and looked at Peter. Do you see that whilst Peter was before these crowds, he was in sight and perhaps earshot of Jesus. Peter it, has denied his Lord to his Lord's hearing, in his sight. Jesus is before these crowds. He has been found guilty in this kangaroo court. They've beaten him and slapped him and said, prophesy, who was it that hit you whilst he was blindfolded? But Jesus wouldn't deny himself. He couldn't deny himself. He had to honour his father. He had to do what was right. He couldn't deny the truth of who he was or what his calling. And Peter, 
he had assured us that he would do the same. And as the cock crows a second time, as he remembers what Jesus has said to him, could you imagine catching Jesus' eye? Could you imagine uh, the pain and that sense of betrayal, that sense of shame? And Peter breaks down and cries. That's it. Three strikes and he's out. Well, as we come to the story in these next uh, few weeks, we'll discover whether Peter truly is out, whether that's the end of it for him, whether his shame and his denial has ruined any chance of being a part of God's plan for his people and for this world, or whether there is some way back for Peter. So Peter, all mouth and trousers, uh, a phrase that comes from my childhood, uh, promised the world, failed to deliver any of it. There before his master denies him three times. But Jesus, in contrast, has had the courage in the face of false accusation and of lies to stand up for who he is, to promise and to hold to honouring God. And so he will go on his way towards his ultimate death. And Peter, he will go in shame back into the shadows. We'll see in the coming weeks what happens. There is a story of three strikes and you're out, of Peter's denial of Jesus. We come now to our family prayer. And I'll lead us as we pray. I'll read the text in black. And perhaps together as a family, you read the responses in the blue text. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honoured. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done. As we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. And now can I encourage you, just wherever you are in your homes, uh, to stand up together. Uh, that's kids and mums, dads, whoever's there. Uh, stand up and join in with us as we sing this lovely song uh, led by Doug Hawley and his team. The song's called I Love You. Uh, in it, he teaches a sign language for some of the significant phrases in the song. So can I encourage you uh, to join in with us all the breakfast at 19. We'll be, uh, we'll be joining in at home. So let's uh, learn this song together. Doug Hawley with I Love You. OK, everyone, can you just point to yourself and say, I, I love, love you. And in sign language, when we point up like this, we're pointing to God. And we're going to say, more than words, just try that, more than words can say it's true. That I love you. And then this, fill me with your love. Fill me with your peace. Fill me, Lord, with you. I don't know about you, but I want more of God to come and fill me and you guys. Fantastic. Hold your hand up like this. Can you do this with me? We're going to go, holy one. I so love you. We will sing your praises because God is so good forever and ever. Amen in sign language is just bringing knuckles together and we're going to lift our hands. So band, let's go for it. We're going to worship. I love you more than words 
else can say it's true that I love you. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your peace. Fill me, Lord, with you. I need you. Just push down. I need you more than words can say. It's true that I need you. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your peace. Fill me, Lord, with you. We hold our hands up. the love that will never, ever, ever change. Nothing will stop you loving us. Loved by you forever. Thank you. And now for our family activity. We've set a little bit of a challenge for you. Uh, you might need to get closer to the screen. Uh, we're going to play Spot the Difference. Uh, we're in a moment, I'm going to put up two images. Uh, you'll have a look at them. Uh, you'll see from the instructions that there are 10 differences. Uh, and just take note uh, of the, uh, the instruction, the warning, not to touch the screen, whether it's your TV, uh, whether it's your parents' laptop, uh, but just try to spot the differences without covering them in greasy fingerprints. So you've got just a few moments uh, to work on finding the 10 differences, and then I'll show you the answers. Are you ready? You ready to take a look at the answers? Let's see how you got on. Here are the 10 differences. Did you spot them all? Very well done if you found them all. Unlucky if you didn't quite get there. Maybe if I'd left you a little longer, you'd have found them all without any help. And we come now to our family news. Now ordinarily, if we were meeting together in the school, we would share with each other, across the room, amongst friends, across families, uh, the things that we have to celebrate, the things that we'd like to share. But just where you are, in your own family, it'd be good to talk, as they say. Have you any news to share with each other? Uh, perhaps you're a, a key worker, an essential worker, and you've been out. How have you got on this week? If you've been exploring and learning from home, uh, then how has that been for you? And then I wonder what has been hard? And what has been the best thing about being in social isolate, isolation. That's really tricky. I'd like you to try and say that at home together three times. Social isolation. 
social isolation, social isolation. I'm sure that's the only three times I've said that right today. And then is there anything you're celebrating today or in the coming week? Are there any birthdays, any big celebrations? Well, I guess you'll be doing them a little differently than you otherwise might be. Uh, but we do hope and pray uh, that you're able to enjoy them to the absolute maximum. And then is there anything that you'd like us to pray about or for? If there are, you can email those to us at breakfast at freshbook.org and we as a breakfast at 19 promise to bring those things before the Lord our God for you in prayer. And as we draw to the end of our time together this morning, we come to our thought for the week. And here it is. Let me ask you the question. Like Peter, have you denied knowing Jesus? And the Bible text that goes with that comes from uh, the second letter to Timothy in chapter 2 and verse 12. If we continue to endure, we shall also rule with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. So that thought for the week again, like Peter, have you denied knowing Jesus? Perhaps you can dwell on that through the week. Coming next week, in the immortal words of Shrek from the movie, pick me! And our prayer for such a time as this that was prepared for us by Thelma. The psalmist reminds us God is our refuge and strength, always ready in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid. Father, we ask you to watch over our families, neighbours, friends, the government and those people serving on the front line. The psalmist also urges us, Stop fighting, or be still, as another translation has it, and know that I am God, supreme among the nations, supreme over the world. Rest assured, he will always be with you. He will never abandon you. And those texts drawn from Psalm 46, verses 1 and 10, and Joshua, chapter 1, verse 5. Thank you very much. We hope you've enjoyed our time together with us and your time together as family. May you just have a blessed week this week uh, in all that you do. May you be safe from the virus. May you be kind to each other and to your neighbours. And we look forward to seeing you next week uh, for the third part of our Breakfast at Nine programme online. Until then, take care. God bless you. See you next week.